Okay, Craig, we've seen how people have conquered nature through the biosphere and through the manipulation of genes and a whole bunch of other ways. Now it's our turn to try to conquer nature ourselves. Is that why we're in the woods? Yeah, we're deep in the woods. Okay. And you're gonna try to start a fire using only what nature can provide you. That sounds terribly hard. And I'm gonna try to spear a fish. Okay, that sounds harder. That's harder. I don't know, I, I've, got, I've got pretty good confidence in myself. I don't, but okay, well you can try, you can try. Let's try. Okay, but how do I start a fire? I don't know how to do it. I don't, I don't know either, good luck. Oh, oh, is there See instructions ya. somewhere? I hope so. So I have to build a fire, I guess. Oh, hey, what's this? That's convenient. Nature provides instructions, okay. I will uh, I'll open up number one. Oh, no money in here. Well, fire starting tip number one, fire. The control of fire by early humans was a turning point in the cultural aspect of human evolution that allowed humans to cook food, remain active at night, live in cooler climates, and obtain warmth and protection from predators and insects. Harnessing the power of fire is one of the key aspects that separates humans from all other animals. Lame And has given our species the evolutionary advantage needed to thrive and to spread to all corners of the earth. Go make fire. Well, that didn't really tell me how to make fire. Yeah, well, I did happen to find a nice chopped log over there, so that's good. We got some kindling, and uh, I got a stick right here. Do that for a while. I'll heat it up a little. Uh, I think I, I wanna open up instruction number two. I don't know what I'm doing. Here we are in the woods. I'm gonna try to spear a fish, but there's a couple things we have to do before we can spear a fish. One is we have to find water. Uh, we can, I can see the water through the trees there. Oh, also if you spot any poison ivy, um, please direct me away from that. I wish I knew what poison ivy looked like. Me too. <laughs> I mean, another thing that I gotta be on the lookout for is a good spear. And before it can be, it's a spear, you know, it's a stick. A good stick would be a long stick, pretty straight, sturdy, and uh, ideally already sharpened. Like this, this seems pretty good. Yeah. So now I just need to sharpen this somehow. Found, found this guy. So it's been uh, broken and it's got kind of a sharp edge here. I mean, it's sort of working. <laughs> I mean, it's not get really getting sharper. It's I mainly kind of like Slowly making it smaller. <laughs> yeah, but, this, but I mean that's what sharpness is, right? I guess. Just making making something smaller. Logs. The first porch. <laughs> I really feel like we're, I'm getting back to nature and how our ancestors lived, like Gandalf and the hobbits. Okay, instruction number two. Fire starting tip number two: the hand drill. The hand drill is one of the oldest and simplest methods of starting a fire. It works by generating heat through friction, thus creating an ember that can then be used to build a fire. For the hand drill, you need a flat board and a spindle approximately two feet in length. Nicely, nice freshly cut board that I found. I just, that was the way the branch grew. It's totally nat nature. All right, I gotta find a spindle. Here, spindle, spindle. This one might do. Spindle break, commence. Yeah. With your knife, cut a V-shaped notch into the board and a small depression adjacent to it for the spindle. Step, 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 step. Place the spindle in the depression, then while maintaining a good amount of downward pressure, roll the stick between the palms of your hands, running them very quickly down the spindle. Keep doing this until the spindle tip glows red and you get an ember. This is impossible. Ooh, I'm gonna be sore tonight. Oh. And cold, probably catch pneumonia. No fire. So Craig, how's that going? Uh, not great. It's not even that warm. I feel like it needs to be warmer if it's gonna start on fire. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Let's move on to number number three, shall we? I think this video might turn out to be just Matt attempts to sharpen a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Does this feel like it's gonna work? I mean, in in its current state, no. But uh. I'm, I'm not beaten yet. Okay. It's just gonna take a while. Right. Oh, there's, oh, oh. We have some, we have some uh, 
Looks like shoelace and twine. Fire starting tip three, the bow drill. Enclosed in this envelope, you will find a string to help you create a bow drill and some twine that can be used for your tinder. You will need your spindle and board from the hand drill as well as a socket and bow. The bow should be about as long as your arm. Use a flexible piece of wood that has a slight curve. The good stuff needs to invest in better axes. String up your bow and you're ready to go. String up my bow. Loop the bowstring around the spindle. Place one end of the spindle in the fireboard and apply pressure on the other end with your socket. Using your bow, start sawing back and forth. The spindle should be rotating quickly. Keep sawing until you create an ember. No, that's not working. All right, I'm gonna make this really tight. If this doesn't work, we were never meant to make fire. There we go. Seems to be working. It's not spinning a lot, but it can go back and forth really quick. Oh, and I broke the board. <laughs> I need to make a new notch, I think. I wonder how Craig's doing. Would it, you know, wouldn't it be crazy if he, had, he, had, he has a fire blazing right now? <laughs> oh, God. I'm getting tired. I feel like I'm, I'm wasting as much energy doing this as I was doing it the other way. <laughs> I feel like this is, should work better. It's warm, but it's not, it's not even hot. Oh, man. Well, it turns out the sharpening was a little trickier than I thought. So I think I'm gonna have to figure out a different way. And I think I might have found a way with this knife. <laughs> oh. It's a pocket knife. Nature provided. Pretty nice knife. Yeah, where did pretty they come flashy. from? Oh yeah, mm. it's working a lot better. <laughs> So I've got this pretty sharp. It's, you know, getting down to uh, close to sunset and that's when the fish are out. And so I think maybe we should try to see if we can find some fish to spear. All right, let's try this spear out. Now, one thing I know is that light refracts through the water. Hmm. So you can't like aim directly at the fish. You either have to like aim ahead of them or, or behind them or something. I don't remember which way. Did you, did you see a fish? No, I was just practicing. Okay. Ooh, feels like there's stuff in here. In closing this envelope, you will find a piece of flint. Use a rock or your knife and scrape against the entire length to create sparks to ignite your tinder. Easy. I hope that that's easy. Ooh, pretty easy. Come on. Come on. Starting fires is hard. Look at those people over there. Fishing with fishing poles and a boat. They don't know what they're missing. You know, maybe it's not about making a spear and spearing a fish, but about getting back to our roots, communing with nature, realizing how hard people had it <laughs> thousands of years ago. What's going on, Craig? I'm pulling the twine apart, making a smaller pile so I can get it lit. Oh, there we go. Flames. First fire we saw all day and it's promptly burning out. That was close. Fires are hard. Number five, let's see what we got. Oh, it doesn't feel like there's a blowtorch in here. Flint and magnesium. Have you used your flint tool to its full potential? Shave narrow side opposite the black spark insert. Accumulate magnesium shavings about the size of a quarter into a small pile and place next to tinder. Scrape the entire length of the spark insert rapidly. This action will generate sparks, causing the magnesium shavings to ignite, providing a white hot flame. Ah, okay. There we go, there we go. White hot flame. Yep, lighting the tinder. All right, we got more tinder here. No. Well, it went out. I think I, waited, I walked too far. I waited too long to get to the fire. I was just kind of hoping there was something there. Oh, I lost a prong. Uh. Well, it got close. But, you know, 
You don't spear fish every day. But it's all about trying. At least I tried, right? You tried to survive. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's evolution for you. You know, there's always a significant portion of organisms that just die out. But that paves the way for those who do survive, so I'm just making room. All right, we're gonna try this again. I got some more magnesium. That twine that I had, I spread out uh, a lot of it. So we got a big pile of twine that'll, that should just go up in flames. And then we got a little bitty sticks in there. And then we'll add a little well, bigger sticks, and then we'll add logs, and then we'll have a fire party. So here goes. Okay, okay, yeah. Light them, light them sticks on fire. Okay, got some, some leaves maybe. No, no. How did anyone ever make fire happen, ever? <laughs> if I just, I could just do this all night and it looks like there's a fire. All right, number six, this better be a blowtorch. Ah, <laughs> matches. Oh, sweet matches. Fire starting, tip number six, matches and paper. Wow, you are pretty bad at this. Go ahead and tear up all the previous instructions and envelopes and use that as your tinder. Then use the matches to light that and start your fire. You have made our early human ancestors very disappointed. <laughs> all right, let's make a fire. Now if this doesn't work, we're going home. Oh geez, match went out. <laughs> match went out. Well, what I have learned is that starting a fire is really hard and I'm very thankful for today's technology. I'd like to try again sometime. Maybe not when cameras are rolling and no one's watching so I don't make a fool of myself. But someday. But for now, I'm going to just enjoy this fire that I've created, but maybe a little bit back because it's, it's hot. I've, I'm sweating sitting there. So. Every day, we influence and mold the natural environment to suit our needs. We've been doing it for thousands of years. But even though we exert an absurd amount of influence over our environment, we are entirely dependent upon nature and we survive at its mercy. And whatever change, whatever damage we inflict upon it, we're inflicting upon ourselves. So we should probably take better care of it. Yep, because it's the only one we got. For now, For until, now. until you know, we find another planet. Or a, a multiple universe scenario. Yeah, we start terraforming Mars. Like in Sliders, you've seen Sliders? Oh yeah, like in Sliders. The, uh, Chris O'Donnell, is that? Yeah, uh, no, it wasn't no. Chris, no, it wasn't Jerry Chris O'Donnell. O'Connell. Jerry O'Connell. I get those confused very And often. Uh, John Rice Davies. Yeah. So Chris O'Donnell's not the only Chris O'Donnell we, we've got. We've also got Jerry O'Connell. <laughs> yeah. So, <yeah. laughs> so that concludes our Humans vs. Nature playlist. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and click that like button and subscribe. And if you want to support our show and see future playlists forever, you can go check out our Patreon page. Last week we asked you what you thought about Jack Horner's Dino Chicken. This is what you had to say. And this is what we're going to say back to you about it. Yeah, it's mostly us saying things back to you. Andrew Young said that it was amazing how he explained the egg and chicken problem, but he said that doesn't explain egg one. Well, I actually think it does. Egg one is referring to the first egg ever laid, which was itself only one instance in a long chain that began billions of years ago with the first self-replicating molecule. The problem here is that we think of eggs as permanent, unchanging things, when in actuality, they're always evolving. Just like chickens are, just like we are, just like all life on the planet is. But the egg always comes first, because when it comes down to it, we all come from a single cell, which is what an egg is, essentially. So at one point, all life was an egg, or at least there was no distinction between the egg and the organism. So every time a chicken or any animal reproduces, the process of going from an egg to a baby is basically an abstract of the entire evolution of life on this planet. Sierra Bennett asked why Jack Horner's project focuses on chickens as opposed to some other bird. Because chickens are readily available. You could probably use any bird, but it's just easier to get a chicken. Have you seen the price of peacock embryos lately? Through the roof! Kanate44 pointed out that when dealing with gene manipulation of a species, the because I want to argument 
can be potentially harmful to the animal we create and we should be really careful. In the video, Jack Horner compared what he's doing to selective breeding in dogs, which has actually led to a lot of unintended problems due to hereditary defects. Big floppy ears, for example, may be cute, but that characteristic makes certain breeds more susceptible to ear infections. Dachshunds, aka wiener dogs, are extremely prone to spinal injuries just because someone wanted a little long dog with short little legs. Genetics is a complicated thing, and it's impossible to know what the quality of life for the dino chicken would be, but it's something we should take into consideration. Thanks for your comments. Next week, we will begin the playlist where we conquer outer space. Yeah. Not inner space. No. Not the one starring Dennis Quaid and Martin Short. No. Nope. And is it Meg Ryan? Is she in it? I'm not I'm not sure. I thought we were done. Wait, we're still talking. Uh, in the okay. comments, leave it leave well, who was it? Was who it Meg was Ryan? In inner space? Was, <laughs> yeah. it, was it Meg Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> it the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turning. We did start the fire. No, we didn't light it, but we tried to fight it. We didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turning. We didn't start the fire. No, we were always on, but we still be on and on. I started the fire though.